Hello again and welcome back to our course on Excel 2019 Advanced. Now just in case you're thinking you may have stumbled into the wrong course, here you're actually looking at part of an access database and in this section I'm going to show you how to connect to data in access databases. If you don't use Access, perhaps you don't have any interest in it at all, you may want to skip this section, but several of the tools and techniques we use do apply to other databases that you can connect to from Excel, so you might find this useful anyway. The database we're looking at is the Esprit de Tour database, and it's a tour company database that was created as part of our Basic Access 2016 course. If you haven't studied that course, I can explain the Esprit de Tour database to you very quickly in terms of what we need in this section of the Excel course. Basically, the hypothetical company, Esprit de Tour, run a number of trips, and you're currently looking now at one of those trips, the Grand Canyon Family Rafting Adventure. And apart from a description of the trip and information about it, including the countries visited, the level in terms of comfort and luxury of the trip, and specific tour dates, there's a dossier of information and various other items related to that trip. Now, bearing in mind that many of you might not be Access users, what I've done is just to open up the navigation pane on the left, and that gives me a list of most of the objects that appear in this database. These objects include tables, queries, forms, reports, and macros. The information contained within this database is held in tables, and each table is very much like an Excel worksheet. So, for instance, when it comes to a trip, there is a table called TBL or Tubal Trip, and the TBL prefix indicates that it's a table. And if I open that up, it looks just like an Excel worksheet. And if you want to, you can, from an Excel workbook, access this data in situ. So in other words, we can link to information that is actually held in an Access database from an Excel workbook. One option, of course, would be to import the data into the workbook, but in this section, we're going to concentrate on connecting to the information in the database and creating a live connection between the two. Now, amongst the tables in the Esprit de Tour database, we have this one, which gives information about trips. We have another one here, Tubal Tour, and if I open that, you'll see that this holds information about specific instances of trips. Then we have another one such as tuple country and trip type and so on. Now an access database is an example of what we call a relational database. And the reason why it's called a relational database is that you can create relationships between the tables. And I'm going to show you now a graphical representation of the relationships within the Esprit de Tour database. So if I go to database tools, one of the options there is relationships. And that shows the structure of the database in terms of the tables. Now let me quickly explain this diagram, explain what we're looking at. One of the key elements of this database is the first table I showed you there, the trip table, Tubal Trip. And notice there is a line between Tubal Trip and Tubal Tour, and it says one at one end and infinity at the other end. What that means is that for each trip, there may be many tours. Each tour is an instance of a trip. Each tour will normally be that trip starting on a particular date, so if you go into a travel agent and book a trip, you would need to decide which instance of that trip you were doing. Normally that would be the start date of the trip. And we are referring to that particular instance as a tour. Now it's also the case that for each trip it can visit one or more countries. So we have a line from Tubal Trip to Tubal Trip Country and through Tubal Trip Country to Tubal Country. And this relationship says that a trip can visit many countries, but also for any country, it can be visited by many trips. 
Now, don't worry too much about the meaning of all of these relationships. I'm pointing this out here because it's a subject that will come up when we are looking at connecting to Access Databases from an Excel workbook in a few minutes time. So now I've created a new workbook in Excel and I'm just going to access one of the tables in that database first of all. So I go to the Data tab and in the leftmost group on the ribbon is Get and Transform Data and I'm going to click the drop down arrow underneath Get Data. I'm going to select From Database and I'm going to select From Microsoft Access Database. Now I need to locate that Access database we were just looking at. Now when you're looking for Access databases, the file extension that Excel 2019 will be looking for is the .mdb file extension or MDE file extensions. These are the extensions associated with older versions of Access and the ACDB and the ACDE that you see there are extensions which are used with the newer versions of Access. In this case, it's a relatively new file, so we have the ACDB file extension on the end of the file that we want to open. So I'm going to select the Esprit de Tour database and click the Import button. And I'm offered a list of queries and tables. You can actually open Access queries in Excel as well as tables. Now for the moment, I'm just going to open a single table and I'm going to open the country table and click on load. And there it is, a list of countries that are available in the Access database. If I make any updates in the Access database, they will be reflected here as well. So basically, I've got a live link here. Now let's look at one aspect of this connection. You can see here the list of countries. They start in the second row with Antarctica and go all the way down to row 18 with Zimbabwe. Let me quickly open the Access Database again. And this time I'm going to open the country table. And there are those same countries. Let me add a new country into the bottom. So I'm going to add the UK. Let me close this database and go back to my Excel sheet. And one of the options we have here on the Table Tools Design ribbon is Refresh. Let me click on Refresh and you can see that the UK has now appeared at the bottom of that list of countries on the Excel sheet with a connection to the Access database. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about refreshing workbooks when they're connected to an Access database in a moment. Right, now let's run through a more advanced example. I've created a new worksheet, Sheet 2, and I'm going to go back to the Data tab. I'm going to click on Get Data, From Database, and From Microsoft Access Database again. I'm going to select the same Access Database and click Import. Now this time I'm going to select a number of tables and in order to do that I need to enable the Select Multiple Items checkbox. You'll see once I've checked that I now get a set of checkboxes where I can select multiple different tables and I'm going to choose uh, Tubble Country, Tubble Tour, Tubble Trip and Tubble Trip Country. And this time I'm going to click the drop down next to load and select load two. Now automatically, if I select more than one table, this checkbox, add this data to the data model, is checked. And the default when I select multiple tables is to get a pivot table report. But on this occasion, I'm going to stick with the table option and click on OK. Now one important thing to highlight before we continue on is this Queries and Connections pane in the right hand side. You can see here we have our database listed at the top and I just want to highlight to you some of the properties. If you right click on your database and go to Properties, this brings up the Connection Properties dialog box and there's lots of options in here which will prove useful to you. So let's run through a few of them. 
One of them is that you can have Excel automatically refresh data on a timed interval. By default, that is 60 minutes, but say if I wanted to have an automatic refresh of data every five minutes, I could go in and modify that. And what that means is that every five minutes, it would check the data in the Access database and see if it needs updating in the Excel workbook. I also have another option here with this checkbox, refresh data when opening the file. So I can specify that every time I open this workbook, I want to refresh the data from the Access database, which is usually a pretty good idea. There is a third checkbox here, which is checked by default, refresh this connection on refresh all. You'll quite often, once you start using external connections, finish up in a situation where you have the external data in a number of different locations. And rather than go through and refresh them one by one, you have the refresh all option up here in the connections group on the data tab. So I'm going to leave those checked and I'm going to click on OK. And what I find is that I now have a whole batch of new sheets and each of those sheets has one of the tables of data in it. And it's worth noting that in this case, the data is held in tabular form. So having set up this connection, I can investigate this connection further. For example, I can go onto the data tab and I can click queries and connections and you'll see a pane open on the right hand side. Let's just make that a little bit bigger. And this pane gives me a list of my workbook connections. So let me just select the latest one I've made here, Tubal Trip Country, right click and select properties. I'm going to switch off the automatic refresh, but I'm going to leave on the refresh data when opening the file. So let me just click on OK. One final thing before we finish up, let me just do one little update. So I'm going to go back to my Access database and I've chosen the first GCA Tours entry there. And you can see the price is $4,080 and I'm going to make a very noticeable change. So we're going to change this to uh, $6,500. I'm going to switch back to Excel And there's the first of those GCA tours in Excel. Let's do a refresh and then you can see the updated price for that tour. So that's it on Access Database Connections. In the next section, we're going to look at getting data from the web. So please join me for that. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. Now to see the rest of the videos in this advanced Excel 2019 playlist, click over there. Finally, if you're enjoying this training, please leave us a thumbs up and some comments. Now let's continue with our Microsoft Excel training.